Starting out in Budapest at our deluxe Marriott Hotel right in the center of town. Very comfortable spot right along the river there. Just a block from Vasi Utko, which is the main shopping promenade of the city of Budapest, passing through Boris Marty Square in the center of town. There's a big memorial there to a poet. Imagine a statue in the main square to a poet. Budapest has quite a literary and cultural history. Right away, we're hungry in Hungary and having lunch at a musical restaurant. You'll find most of the quality restaurants in town have live music. And in the evening also, there's lots of live music venues. There's a great view of the castle of Buda across the Danube from our hotel. We'll take you over to the old part of town a little bit later in the program. We're out for a morning walk to the Grand Market Hall. This is a fabulous market structure that was first built in 1897. It's a steel and glass building, and it has all manner of goods for sale, mostly fresh produce for the locals, but there's also souvenirs for the visitors. We've got lace shops, t-shirts, little knickknacks, things that say Budapest. There's a big international newsstand if you want to get your Herald Tribune or English language magazines there. But primarily, it's a place for the locals to come out and get their fresh produce, so it's a great spot for the visitor, for some people watching. You really should put that on your itinerary in Budapest, a little walk through the Grand Market Hall. It's open every day from six in the morning till five in the afternoon, except Sunday when it's closed. Taking off on our bus tour of the city, we have a local tour in each place that we visit. Notice this underpass. It's a city street with a little underpass. It's a great way of getting through an intersection without getting hung up at a traffic light, something Honolulu should study for some of our busy streets. The largest church in town is St. Stephen's Basilica that was built from 1851 in a Baroque style. It covers about 4,000 square yards and its great dome is 96 meters high. Just next door is a nice souvenir shop out in the square in front of the Basilica. <laughs> Nice place to pick up on some colored lace, dresses, tops, little dolls. There's a lot of unique knickknacks from Budapest that you want to bring home with you. Mementos of the trip. Back on our tour bus, we continue through the city. Budapest is divided into two halves. There's Buda up on the hill across the river, where we're going now. And there's Pest, which is the flatter side, the newer half of town. So into the old part of the city, up the hill into Buda, it's also called the Castle District, where our guide walks us around and tells us some about the history of the town and the cathedral. These flags, what you see on the columns, these decorated the, uh, the church in 1867. Once here was a fish market in the medieval ages. There was a fish market area and the fisherman's village was here in the slope of the hill. There are several nice viewpoints from the Buddha side. We're at the Fisherman's Bastion, a lovely neo-Gothic structure. And here we have some nice views of the old town of Buddha, the castle district. St. Stephen's Cathedral in the background. There's charming sculptures and fountains and little parks here in this district and a lot of nice shops that are gonna catch your eye. In particular, the Hungarian ceramics is one of the great finds of the country that you might want to consider. It's a little bit breakable, but if you pack it nicely, or they can ship it home for you. Back in our bus, we're fortunate the bus has a permit to drive in the old town because parking and driving is definitely restricted up here. It's mostly a pedestrian zone. There's a hill that offers a perfect view of the entire city. From here you can see both the Buddha side as well as Pest and take some pictures with your tour guide. There's the castle overlooking the Chain Bridge, the Danube River, and the Pest side of town. And nestled right in the heart of town is our hotel, the Marriott. Great spot for us to stay. We can easily walk any place in town from the hotel. And Budapest has a good mass transit system that we'll show you a little bit of later in the program. They have the continent's first subway still functions very nicely 
Continuing along on our tour bus, we're just wrapping up the tour now. It's a half day city tour with a local guide. And then we're heading for lunch at the most famous restaurant in town, Gundel. This is a very elegant place. In the evening, there's a dress code, but at lunchtime, it's more casual. And yet the food is just as delicious at lunch as at dinner. Very nice surroundings. We're right next to the National Art Gallery where we're heading after lunch. And this was a super meal. Not that expensive either, about $20 per person. The National Art Gallery has got a very nice collection of Impressionist paintings, there is sculpture, and it's all housed in the most elegant of neoclassical buildings. Touches of the Italian Renaissance as well in this Florentine style courtyard. And the treasure of the museum is this horse, this little bronze horse, because it's the only known sculpture by Leonardo da Vinci. By the hand of the master himself. That's quite a thrill to see. It's on Hero Square and very convenient to get there because the subway runs right to Hero Square. This is it, the oldest subway line on the continent. And it's easy to use it. You buy your ticket, you punch the ticket in the validating machine and get on the train. Interesting that this subway is just barely below street level. And this original line connects the Hero Square right into the heart of town where we're staying and we emerge at Gerbal Cafe, one of the most famous places in town. And sure enough, we sit at the sidewalk cafe and enjoy some delectable sweets. Yeah, no, she hates this stuff. Nice coffee, she like ice cream, she pastries. It's just around the corner from our hotel, the Marriott, right on this beautiful pedestrian promenade. There's uh, some tourist shops here, some stands where you can buy handmade lace and other local goods. Nice local clothing as well, and a whole number of restaurants along this riverbank. And there's also a trolley that runs up and down the river. There's a number of trolleys that run throughout town. We'll show you a little bit later in the program. But now it's time for dinner. There are a dozen nice restaurants of this quality within a few blocks of our hotel area in the central part of Pest. And typical, you'll find the Hungarian cuisine and you'll find Hungarian music. It's really a great tradition in Budapest that the fine restaurants have got live music. You get spoiled here. You wish that all the restaurants of Europe would offer such great ambience and delicious foods. But really, it's only in Budapest that you'll find so much music in the restaurants. And the prices here for a good meal with fine wine are very reasonable. Here's another one of the typical restaurants of the area. Here you can have a complete elegant dinner for about $30. Hungarian cuisine is heavy on the meat and potatoes, the goulash, and the strong flavors of paprika. Speaking of eating, another great feast every day is our hotel breakfast. At the Marriott, they really put on a show. We found this was actually the best of all the breakfast buffets of our tour. In each city, we had a nice breakfast, but especially here at the Budapest Marriott, it's way over the top. You can have all sorts of foods that will keep you going throughout the entire day. And our Hawaii group just eats it up. Of course, normally at home, most of us just have toast and coffee or tea and maybe a papaya slice in our Hawaii breakfast. But when we're on the road, it's a different story. Breakfast is included, so eat it up and power down on some fuel that will get us through another big busy day. Another day of our travels you're watching the Hawaii Geographic Society's World Traveler, and we're taking you through Central Europe in this program. We're starting out in Budapest, and we'll be heading next to Vienna, and then on to Salzburg in Austria, to Heidelberg, to Munich, up to Berlin, and finally Prague.
You can also eat outdoors at the terrace if you wish at the Marriott here. I've completed our breakfast and we're up and running and ready for departure from Budapest. We're moving on to our next city of Vienna. But before we go, we relax a little bit in the lounge of the Marriott and talk among ourselves and reflect back on the trip. Give you some insights as to how our travelers are enjoying the tour so far. Nice and clean mm -hmm. and so beautiful because you just don't see that in America at all. Mm. And this is the only place you can come and really see the old, old architecture, what the old, old building uh, mm -hmm. cities look like. Mm -hmm. Been here for so long. Really? It's about the city, what do you think of Budapest? Okay. It's a very good, I think, very interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Different. Different, yeah. Entirely different. Up over here, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right, and Budapest is a beautiful city, and I enjoy it, and the hotel is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Ready for Vienna? I'm always ready for anywhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are set. <laughs> Budapest, how'd you like Budapest? Oh, I thought it, it's one of the most beautiful cities um, I've seen so far. The weather's been great. Um, we had some wonderful commentaries from the guide, who was very excellent. And we saw Buddha and Pesh. Well, I, I agree with everything that Claudine said. I, well, I have to, you know. But, uh, yeah, we had a great time. We transfer from our hotel to the main train station of Budapest, the Kaleti station. It's a grand old building. It's just recently been renovated. So it's looking really good once again. Huge train barn, kind of an open air train shed in the grand old European style. Departing from Budapest, we'll be traveling a few hours on a very comfortable first class train, making our way to Vienna.